Good afternoon, my name is Mr. Hagen. I'm one of the instructors here at Porter and Chester Institute. We have several programs here at Porter and Chester, and the program we're gonna be discussing is low voltage. If you were in a building of, in what's called a place of public accommodation or public occupancy, a school, city hall, uh, the library, Walmart, Target, etc., uh, they would be required to have a fire alarm system because it needs to evacuate the people, God forbid there was a fire. Uh, more another elective system that they don't have to have, of course, would be a burglar alarm system. But most businesses, some residences, have a burglar alarm system. Same thing with camera systems. They're not required by code. They're certainly not required by anybody. But most businesses today have camera systems. Other things that fall into the low voltage category, if you went to your average uh, big box store, every one of the uh, data points, every one of the cashiers would have a telephone system, they would have what's called a POS, a point of sale system. Above and beyond that, probably, uh, certainly in the library, every cubby hole, every um, office would have a data point. And that means one of these, that means a low voltage technician, would have also installed and dropped a wire at each of the locations where there's going to be a computer, a printer, a fax machine, etc. So these are the items that typically fall into the category of low voltage. Now, a little, a little more broadly, for example, um, here is a, is a cross-section of what would be referred to as one of the good old-fashioned transatlantic cables. You'll see there is 1,000 individual little wires right here. That's how we used to communicate overseas. Every pair of wires would have a phone line on it or some form of communication, and they would run a cable like this, transatlantic, across the floor or on the floor of the ocean. Um, the good news is, is that that's largely been replaced by a much faster medium, and that would be fiber optics. You can transmit all of these over this handful right here. We have had uh, students in the past go work in the solar industry, that's low voltage. This is a solar panel, so one particular solar panel or an entire array of solar panels like you sometimes see on the top of a roof of a commercial building or a, on top of a residential house. This converts the sunlight into DC voltage, which then down the line is converted to AC voltage to provide power, either absent the uh, power company's power, or some people perhaps live off the grid, for example, Arizona and New Mexico. So we've had technicians go, uh, graduates go and get into the field of um, low voltage solar. All right, so here's an example that the students built. So this is a, this is fiber infrastructure. So for example, you would have what's typically referred to as a, as a IDF a, uh, or IDC, intermediate data closet. So for example, there would be, if this was a large school system, there would be one data closet maybe in the east wing, one data closet in the west wing, and then uh, fiber optic would be connected to it. And then perhaps the, what they call the MDC, the main data center, would, would have also the main fiber would come into one place and then it would be uh, tied into their network. Camera systems, so we did already talk about camera systems. There are IP camera systems, internet protocol, that plug into data circuits. There are hardwired camera systems, both of which can be put up on a network and can you can see the cameras on your phone, you can see the cameras on a network, you can go on a cruise to the Caribbean and look at the cameras at your house or your business, etc. Um, there's a whole host of covert cameras. They are somewhat regulated. Uh, certainly you're not supposed to have a covert camera anywhere where there's an expectation of privacy, but here's an example of two. If you take a close look at the numeral two in this clock, you're going to see a dot at the top right-hand corner of the number two, which is being transmitted via a very, very small camera to this particular monitor down here. Similarly, there's a garden variety smoke detector up there. And if you look, there's a very small hole drilled into that particular smoke detector. And that miniature camera is being transmitted to this particular monitor right here. If you think about a telephone system or a, or a data drop, uh, typically these wires have to come all into a single location. So let's visualize a school of 50 classrooms. Okay, so somewhere there's gonna be a, a main area where all these data points come back and they will be punched down right here in a particular order by color. And that's, that's part of what we do here. The students, they install things, they program things, 
they troubleshoot, sometimes they break them and blow them up, that's okay. And of course, service things. So for example, when it comes to burglar alarms, part of the labs we do here would be installation of burglar alarms, programming of burglar alarms, and fire alarms. Uh, troubleshooting these things when, if, if and when they're not working correctly, and of course, servicing them going forward. So other things that fall into the category of low voltage, a mixing board. So as you might imagine, if there, if there was a, uh, if we were sponsoring a small concert here and we had two guitarists and two singers and a drum set, not everybody is always in harmony and not everybody's playing as loudly or as softly. So the person sitting at the mixing board can uh, raise and lower the volume and the mix. That's why they call it a mixing board. And that would give you and the listeners at the concert hall the desired sound that you would like to have. Burglar alarms, fire alarms, nurse call systems, data, telephone systems, there's a whole host of things. So if you were to hire somebody to come to your house or your place of business, they would either have to have either the high voltage license or the low voltage license.